Recently, Canada imposed sanctions on two Sri Lankan former presidents and two military personnel. As much as the Colombo Liberals are joyously celebrating this fact by trying to say that it's only on just two individuals, you really need to wake up. These two presidents who were given sanctions, despite both are not popular in the Colombo radical liberal circles, those two are pertinent to this country winning its war against the worthless, ruthless, spineless terrorist organization, the LTTE. Their leadership and our heroic military's uh, commitment is the reason Sri Lanka is a free nation. So if you are thinking, oh no, these sanctions are only on two individuals, not on Sri Lanka as a state, which is what the liberal clowns are funneling these days to make you believe that bull, so you don't get rattled. The reality is as such, this is the beginning of bigger things to come. The next will be for sure, be the rest of the country. Just imagine if we as a nation collectively elected someone the LTT lovers in Canada hate and do not want, they will for sure push their government to impose sanctions. Please get this straight. The LTTE lovers in Canada who are angry that their loving leader Prabhakaran was killed by a heroic forces do not care about the Tamil people in Sri Lanka. They don't give a damn. All they want is to see Sri Lanka broken into two and that Tamil Leelam is becoming a reality. It looks like the Canadian government is leading the way. I can hear the Colombo Twitter liberals uh, chanting the claims of Onno Koti Nagiti Nemo claim just to be cynical at the fact that when an election is close by, patriotic community use this line as a scare tactic. But you really need to think as to why, when something like this comes up, why are they bring, uh, being pushed by these uh, NGOs and the rest of the Western clan to hold the elections? There's also the question as to why the government of uh, Sri Lanka didn't do anything to counter these fake allegations against a sovereign nation. Last week in the State of the Nation podcast, Dr. Pratima Mahanamaheva, who was uh, our former Human Rights Commissioner and an individual who uh, fought in Geneva, New York and the rest of the world, for, uh, for to create actually the true voice of Sri Lanka, gave us an indication as to why the government of Sri Lanka was not interested in supporting this voice. When we were actually fighting for our country, the United Nations Human Rights Council representative, one of the famous cricket commentator, he never gave a glass of water for us, but they all gave for the LTT supporters, yeah. those who are coming they from had a party. Sri Lanka. And, because I, I, I want to tell this truth. We were yeah. crying. We were crying, but they never cared. They show their backside to us, that's so. This is so the Sri Lankan embassy. Sri Lankan permanent representative office in Geneva, 2018 in October, I'm telling you. If not asked from the other souls, they had nice dinner dance, dinner parties for whom the LTT, LTT supporters. propaganda supporters. So we are actually fighting for what finally we think. Unitary we fight, but we need some agreement with the government. Otherwise, I'll tell, give LTT all the powers. <laughs> give give transnational. My, we have to try yeah, that too. Yeah, give, yeah. give transnational government. Ask uh, Rudra Kumaran to come and uh, you yeah. know, administer this country. Well, that was uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahanamaheva, uh, former Human Rights Commissioner of Sri Lanka. Now, let's get more into this story. Joining me now is uh, adjunct professor and research fellow of the International Center for Interdisciplinary Research uh, in uh, Law at the Laurentian University of Canada, Professor Neville Havagay. He joins me now from Ottawa, Canada, via Zoom. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, for your time. Um, now, what amazes me, Professor, is when there are so much of negatory views being mentioned in Canada about Sri Lanka, the LTT propaganda has successfully managed to creep into the political branches and the hierarchy of Canada and is changing the narrative of the war fought by our war heroes to bring victory into this country. Now, what's happening in terms of the people, especially the Sri Lankan community, who are opposing this? I'm sure you all are not getting a good image due to these uh, sanctions. How exactly are you fighting uh, back against this LTTE terrorist propaganda? Thank you very much, Mahesh, uh, for inviting me for this interview. And uh, that is a great question. But I do see there's a lot of moving elements within inside the uh, 
uh, your question. Um, I think I will narrow down to three parts. First part is that uh, uh, Canada's position about the san uh, sanctions. Canada is to get used to enforce the sanctions the, if they think there's a human rights violations in other part of the world. And they enforce the sanction based on the three categories. And they are using three instruments. One is the United Nations Act. Then other one is the Special Economic Measures Act. Then the, our uh, third uh, instrument they are using, Justice for Victims of Corrupt Foreign Official Act. So what for this particular case, Canada has used just uh, Special Economic Measures Act to implement the sanction against the uh, few individuals in Sri Lanka. Now, uh, so this is the legal instrument uh, Canada has been used. So now we need to find out on what ground Canada has uh, decided to enforce sanction against these individuals. These individuals, they identify as uh, uh, political figures and military figures and military administration figures. So that's how we need to narrow down the, that question and answer. That political figures is uh, directly connected to the former uh, president, uh, uh, Mahindra Rajapaksha. Then other individuals are uh, uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha. At that time, he was a defense secretary. And other two individuals are military involvement, uh, military person. Now, uh, we need to find out on what ground On what ground they have implemented that question, uh, that uh, the, the the sanction? That the minister is thinking there is a reasonable, uh, satisfied that there is a reasonable ground to believe. That context is not the so uh, very powerful, and the threshold value is very low. Then the minister is thinking there is a reasonable ground to believe. So now we need to identify why minister is thinking there is a reasonable ground to believe. But this is the place is going to claim that the LTT connection between the, their propaganda. Now I need to identify what is the LTT propaganda. LTT propaganda we identified as a three main uh, folds, three folds. First fold is that Tamil are innocent victims of the government dominated by Sinhalese. Second one is the Sri Lankan Tamils constituting 12.5 of the population are subject to constant discrimination and military oppression, that Tamils can never peacefully coexist with the Sinhalese in single state. So those are the three main elements we identify throughout their campaign. This is uh, this is a very co uh, very con uh, constant from the beginning. So now we need to find out Tamils are innocent victim of government dominated single state. Before that is now is uh, now I want to connect this statement to the directly to the sanction. Sanction is uh, implemented as an example. I, I mentioned that political figure. One of the political figure is the uh, president uh, uh, Mahindra Rajapaksha. So now their propaganda is directly connected with the political figure. So which is it confirmed that this is a part of the LTT campaign. Then second issue I need to identify what is their second propaganda campaign. Second element of their propaganda campaign is that Tamils uh, uh, are subject to constant discrimination and military oppression. So in that case, they had to connect the military personnel to this uh, the particular issue. So therefore, sanction against for the two military personnel and attached to the former defense secretary is uh, directly connected with the LTT propaganda. So this is the threshold value that we can establish at, at the beginning, before answer this question, the sanctions are behind directly influenced by the LTT propaganda. It is reasonable uh, ground for me to believe it is the LTT propaganda. Understood, uh, Professor. Now, these sanctions were only imposed on four individuals. Now, in your opinion, is that is this the start of a bigger process of sanctioning? Perhaps Canadians might be blind and deaf to the truth that they um, might single-handedly implement and achieve what Prabhakaran failed in his military quest. Yes, that's correct. Uh, but Canada, uh, in my view, uh, when you look at the whole process, sanction process, and for the legal procedure process, 
Canada balanced the damage, very well balanced the damage with the foreign affairs with Sri Lanka. So Canada would have implemented this uh, sanction against these four individuals, especially uh, concern is that uh, President uh, uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha, when he was in power, and the Mahindra Rajapaksha was in power. But Canada doesn't want to do that because it will risk the diplomatic uh, relation between the two countries. Canada very well balanced. and But they did, the, they brought this san uh, sanction after that uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha was outset for the government and uh, Mahindra Rajapaksha also outset the government. So now we have another question coming into play. Who are the people who behind the campaign that we call so-called Aragale, who behind to outset this individual? Then now it can be con connected that because of they outset the individual as a purpose of the, to, to bring them a sanction on Canada. Uh, 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 according to the, my review and my analysis with the in the policy analysis and uh, in the region, I'm pretty sure if the LTT propaganda and LTT element, and anyhow they influence the government, and they will not say they will they cannot bring the sanction against the uh, president and prime minister of another country. That is the reason they want to outset this both two individuals. Then after that they brought the sanction against this uh, individual, and it will open the pathway for Canada to enforce the sanction. So therefore it is now very clear connection. And Aragale behind also run by this uh, LTT propaganda, LTT problem. So therefore, it is the, against the country, and that's what they are going to do. So now uh, we need to identify and uh, how the Canada balance the situation. Uh, so they they put the you know three million uh, donation uh, support for the Canada. Then after that, they import the. Yeah. Understood, uh, Professor. Uh, now, I want to revisit something you uh, said prior. Uh, you said that the LTTE propaganda arm could have funded the Aragale. Can you elaborate on that, Professor? Uh, but actually, I do uh, I do connect the, the dots about this incident. Because the san sanctions behind uh, with the uh, political figures, uh, two, one political figure and the other three defense. Because the LTT propaganda campaign is mainly first fold of the analysis is Tamil Sai is a victim of the dominant uh, dominated Sinhalese government. So the government component is connected with the president uh, Mahindra Rajapaksha. Then after that, they, they said subject to constant discrimination with the military oppression. So therefore, it is connected with the directly LTT propaganda, the, the second uh, threshold value, uh, second fold value uh, with the uh, military oppression. Now, in order to bring the sanction against these two individuals, uh, these individuals, what they quoted, the president and the defense official, former president and the defense official, government is, Canada is not going to enforce the sanction against the uh, currently, they if they are in power. It is, I'm pretty sure, 100% that is the government policy and it will add the more problem with the diplomatic circles and they're dealing with the government relations. So therefore, they import the sanction after once they outset from the government. So in that case, I'm pretty sure it is It is very, uh, I have a very strong, uh, same as Melanie Jolly, prime, uh, foreign minister said, he has a strong, uh, reasonable ground to believe for this individual involved for uh, this uh, uh, humanitarian uh, uh, issues. Then I also have a very strong, reasonable ground to believe this Aragale was the main important item is to outset the two, uh, two, uh, two elements of the uh, LTT propaganda. One is the former president, uh, uh, the Mahindra Rajapaksha. Second element is the military figure, uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha. And then after that, they outset the people from the government. Then they came back again to the uh, government of Canada and said, OK, now they are not in power. Please bring the sanction. So we can uh, the clearly uh, connected that one, uh, connected uh, issue, because this sanction came on 2023, January 6. After we have completed everything, countries back to normal, settle down, everybody for forget the Mahindra Rajapaksha, everybody forget the Gotabe Rajapaksha, they are not in power, and now they broke the sanction. That's how my uh, analysis. 
Yes, indeed. A uh, lot to think about. Uh, thank you very much. That was uh, Professor Neville Hevage, adjunct professor and research fellow of the International Center for Interdisciplinary Research in Law at the Laurentian University in Canada. A small break, and on the other side, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Ali Sabri, joins me to answer why the truth is not being pushed through our embassy network worldwide. We'll be right back.